Yo, what's up everyone? It's Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2! In this video, we are going to be talking about the Char data type, sponsored by Onyx. Anywho, Char is short for character. This is another type of data. We've already discussed the numeric data types, which are used for numbers. Well, the character data type, or char, is used to store individual characters. Now, what exactly is a character? A character is anything we're allowed to type, input, or output on the computer. So you can generally think of a keyboard as anything on there being a character. So you know, you're gonna have a space, you're gonna have a tab, you're gonna have a backspace, you're gonna have a bunch of letters, a bunch of numbers, all that good stuff. There are some other characters that you can't visually see on a keyboard. For example, there is a null character, which you can represent as a backslash zero. So examples of characters would be A, A, which by the way, these are not the same character, B, B, one, two, backslash T for tab, backslash N. And when you're writing characters in a program, you will always use single quotes to surround them. That establishes the difference between one as a character and one as a number. They are two separate things. Well, how do you know what characters are allowed? Like, I mentioned that most of the characters on the keyboard are allowed, but what about different languages and all that good stuff? Well, that has to do with what's known as a character set. Now, the character set is the allowed characters. And the character set we use when we are using C is a very limited character set known as ASCII. Now, if you want, you can look up ASCII and figure out the characters that are allowed in this character set. Now, before we talk more about character sets, I want to discuss binary. Now, whenever you hear the term binary, you should automatically think two states. We can represent two different states using zeros and ones. This could be on, off, high, low, yes, no, true, false, etc. The term binary, you often associate it with computers, but it doesn't necessarily have to be computers. Anything that is in two states can be considered binary. But in computers, we use binary to represent numbers and characters and all of that stuff. So if we just have one individual binary character like this, it is called a bit. So an individual bit can be either a zero or it can be a one. Now having only two options isn't very helpful. So to make things more complete and more complex, we can have multiple bits. For example, we could have eight bits. So a group of eight bits is so common that it has its own name. This is called a byte. You're probably wondering why I'm going into all this stuff. Well, trust me, this is very useful when it comes to understanding data types and data in C programming and any programming language. So each one of these bits can have a value of either zero or one. So we could say zero, 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 one, zero. This is just an example. You could fill it up however you wanted. Well, computers understand groups of bits like this to represent something in the computer. If a programming language is using the ASCII character set, it will interpret groups of eight bits. So this actually means something. What exactly does this mean? Well, this is actually how you represent a capital A. So when you make a capital A, this is how it is stored in binary. Now, standard ASCII actually only uses seven of these bits. So it's going to take the first seven of these and this last one is left untouched. Some versions of ASCII use that last bit and those are called the extended character sets. What we need to understand is that ASCII has groups of eight bits. The biggest one or the most significant one is left alone, so it doesn't worry about that one. And it uses these seven to make some kind of data. Well, since we only have seven spots to put data, there is only so many options. For example, you could have one, 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 zero, one, 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 zero, one, 
1111110 and so forth. If you count all the possible possibilities of ones and zeros, you get a special number which is 128. What this means is that we are able to represent 128 different characters. The question is though, how does the computer know how to interpret this data? Well, it's actually pretty interesting because if you interpret this data as a character, you get A. But if you interpret this data as a number, you actually get 65. So what that means is there's actually this direct correlation between characters and numbers. A as an integer is 65. It's kind of confusing at first, but just think that every character has some numeric value behind it. It just depends on how we interpret that data. If it's interpreted as a character, it'll be A. If it's interpreted as a number, it'll be 65. And every single character is going to have a different number. So for example, if this was one, the number would be 67. And the character would be C. So hopefully that is a pretty good introduction to ASCII, binary, characters, and all of that good stuff. It's a lot of information for one video, so if it's a little overwhelming, that's okay. Just watch it a couple times. Be sure to click like and subscribe and share it with all of your friends. All right, thanks guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.